So welcome back to another episode of the Overland Bonfire podcast brought to you by Blue Ridge Overland Gear. <laughs> this is... Uh, that's uh, Matt. I'm Matt. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you pointed to CT. Oh, oh, I, I, oh I'm CT. <laughs> I'm Rick. And today we are going to talk about everything you need to know to get started overlanding. If you are the beginner overlander, sit down, get your notebook, your digital recorder, and a whiteboard and some yarn and some safety pins, because we are going to lay all this out for you. Push pins. I don't know why you would use safety pins. That would be hard. Yeah, yeah. Extra no diapers there. Yeah. 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 You'll look extra crazy if you're bored with all the yarn and pictures, you know, yeah. use the safety pins though. <clears throat> so, <Extra crazy. laughs> uh, what you need to know and what you need to get started overlanding. So, step one, Buy TRD a Pro 2023 Toyota Tundra. Boom. Lift, wheels. You're definitely going to need like several rooftop tents on top of it. Yeah. You're going to need like a 12,000, 14,000 pound winch. A trailer and a van to tow it with. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And then an F550. An earth rumor. I was going to say, you might as well start with that. <laughs> yeah. Don't go. Don't You're going to need about a dozen Don't get off from Chicago when you're going to, to New York. film yourself. Yeah. Don't half-ass two things. Whole-ass one thing. <laughs> right. Get an earth roamer, pull a toy hauler with it, and put your Tundra inside that. Or your side by side, I think that might be fun too. That, oh, yeah, you're gonna uh, need to hire a drone pilot, follow <laughs> you around, and film you. You're also gonna need a main camera guy just to film, you know, things yeah. around camp. And then you'll so make shoot sure you B-roll. have him lined up. You'll Ready shoot B-roll of those guys, so behind the scenes. So that, yep, you got to have the BTS for your Patreon, because yeah. um, you're gonna have to, you know, create some Patreon perks. Get so the BTS is really good for that. Yeah, it's like yeah. they're speaking a foreign language. I don't <laughs> even know what any of that is. Or, <laughs> <laughs> or we could talk Patreon about what you a, actually need. A, uh, BTS per, I don't even know what this is. That was all in jest. If you do have a 2023 TRD Pro Tundra, that's awesome. But what we're talking about today is uh, what you actually need to get started overlanding. So on a slightly more grounded and realistic uh, tra- train of thought here. You need a Winnebago Revel. <laughs> I'm figuring, okay, sorry, too much. Okay, stop. Okay. Yeah. I, I would like one. Or, or at least like a storyteller. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I think I think Jeremy and Jen's van would be. Oh yeah, I mean that's what I really want, but that's oh yeah, that's way harder to find. Is it an Ecoline or no? It, oh, it's a uh, it's a sportsmobile. Sportsmobile, yeah. yeah, yeah with the but it's uh, built on a in a kind of line. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, wow. Okay, so false start followed by unintentional false start. Uh, so. What you actually need, we kind of like have talked about this a little bit uh, in the difference between overlanding and off-roading ep- episode. Uh, but one thing I want to kind of hit on is that like, you know, for most people, you, at least getting started, your overlanding adventures are probably not going to take you too far off the, the beaten path. You know, we're not necessarily talking paved roads here, depending on where you're going, you know, uh, out West, you can cover a lot of miles just on dirt here in the East. You're going to pick up pavement here and there. Uh, so just with that in mind that, you know, all wheel drive, stock four wheel drive, you know, something like that for the vehicle, you know, can take you a lot of places and get you away from the crowds, even if that's your intention. Any thoughts on that guys? No. Cool. All right. Thanks for joining us for another episode. (laughs) No, I think, I think the, uh, I think the thing people miss is it when they're just whatever they're doing camping wise. And, uh, you know, most of my, I mean, I guess I, I've taken sport of trips that are specifically to travel. I take a lot of trips that have other, you know, other uses within them or other, other, you know, doing other things and the traveling is just part of it. But one of the things I, I, I tell people is find, find a campground, you know, or, uh, uh, what do we call the, what do you call AOAs the things? Or no. Dispersed. No, what do you call the things where you like pay thirty dollars oh, to camp. camp with somebody? Hip camp, right, right, right. There we go. I knew yeah. it was one of those, which things. we will soon be on. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, we're gonna yeah, we're yeah, gonna yeah. be on hip camp. Uh, anyway, find find something like that or a local, you know, local private campground, small place that is within say forty five minutes of your house. Yeah, yeah. And and base out of something like that the first time because then typically you've got shower bathroom. Mm-hmm. Uh. And if it goes sideways, especially with a family, like test driving that, like mm, shakedown trip. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. that like, oh, if it really sucks or the weather's really bad, you drive home. Yeah, you yeah. know, you just pack up and you're like, all right, screw this. We're going to go home and mm. and rethink our rethink our gear and try it again. But I, I mean, I think honestly, kind of test driving that, um, you know, test driving that someplace that you can 
go and hang out for a day. Kind of be a month in Mexico or Alaska, is what right? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. I no, I, I mean, I, I really think the like, like I said, small sort of shakedown trips make a lot of sense. Mm. Yeah. Um, you know, and and something close enough to home that you can get back. Yeah, and you can and, find and some you cool... don't have to keep food forever that way. You know, what I mean, like yeah. there's a lot of things that sort of make it make it handy. You know where there's places to eat typically if you want to go eat or if you want to go do something mm-hmm. and you can kind of base out of that spot and kind of bum around and do some exploring. I think that, I think in, in the beginning, I think that makes a lot of sense. Matter of fact, you can do, you know, you just start expanding those distances. Yeah. You know, something that's two hours away, something that's yeah. three hours away. I, and then once you've got a couple of those under your belt, like have at it. Yeah. yeah. I fall into that trap too of like, oh, I need to do something real and legit to make it hard and all this. And and yeah. then it ends up being like like too you know I make the barrier of entry too high for myself. Yeah, and then, and then you don't go. And then so don't go. right, because that's the key, right? Like you got to yeah. just go out the fucking driveway and you gotta, and uh, put that key in the ignition. You got to turn it sideways. You got to shift it into gear, and you yeah. got to get out the driveway. Yeah, yeah, that's the key. Get out the driveway. Go someplace close. So some buddies and I, kind of on that note, we uh, several years ago uh, back in Tennessee started doing what we called the the sub eighteen hour overnighter, which was not a concept that we came up with, but we started implementing it. And we would literally just find places 25, 30 minutes away. Now we lived in a spot that, you know, had a lot There's of... There's a lot of that available. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but everything from just, like, asking a farmer, like, hey, can we camp out next to your pond, you know, yeah. uh, Friday night? Or, you know, uh, oh, we're just going to go down to the river and go out to the end of the dead-end road that runs along the river or, you know, whatever. And we would literally meet up after work, you know, usually have a really simple dinner planned. So we could just, like, you know, yeah. roll in pop the tents and Eat. dinner was done in yep. 15, 20 minutes, then hang out, fish, whatever. And then get up the next morning, usually sometimes just make coffee and then roll out for a breakfast spot. Uh, or we make a big breakfast and then leave, you know, and yeah. literally be between like five o'clock on Friday and be home by like 10 on Saturday morning. So if you had family stuff going on, you know, your whole, whole still, Saturday yeah, wasn't shy. But I think it's, that's handy. Like the, like I said, especially if the, if you like to fish or like to bike or something like that, it's, it's a nice segue into, okay, great. We're going to go someplace where we can fish a little bit. We're going to go play someplace where we can bike a little bit or someplace that's close enough. That's got some good day hiking or whatever yeah. that is. And we're just going to. You know, we're gonna find someplace close, camp, hike a little bit, drive around a little bit, yeah. yeah do some do some light exploring. Make you sure you get that, the experience without the huge investment. Yeah. Well, and and you get the you don't have the you, you don't the crisis isn't a big deal. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you know, like you know, you're you you know people to come help you. You know, yeah. you know, you know where stuff is. You know, if you've got a problem, you can go back home. If you you know, like I said, you run into trouble. It just, I think that kind of stuff makes it easier. And, and it's a, you know, for me, it's probably a pretty good confidence booter, booster. Oh, okay. Like the kids survived. Yeah, yeah. You know, the kids went through the night. All right. The, you know, nobody froze to death. No, right. Yeah. Nobody froze to death. We didn't, you know, we weren't, you know, we weren't, you know, lathered in our own sweat for three days and yeah. in the desert and without water and whatever, you know, I mean. Yeah. No, I mean, we've all been there. I mean, I think about, you know, we got a camp stove here in the shop for using some of our shop meals and taking to events that, you know, we cracked it out here and it wasn't like wanting to ignite really well and we had to do some fiddling. Like, it's way easier to do that when, oh, the camp stove's not working. You just want to run and grab burgers. You know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, a hundred percent. And then, like, and then, and then like, oh geez, we need to add this to our list of stuff we take yeah. because we had this problem. Yeah. And I think that's the, I think shakedown trips like that make a ton of sense. And I don't, I, I don't think a lot of people do them and I don't think a lot of people, um, are, they're probably not as inspiring, but they're honestly yeah. a lot of fun, especially mm-hmm. like I said, family, family, you know, if you've got a family going stuff like that. And I think like Jeremy and Jen just basically did a shakedown trip in their van. Not that they haven't camped a ton but yeah yeah a shakedown I mean, trip for them <laughs> yeah, yeah i mean uh, new they, platform yeah 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 they 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 drove over here three hours four hours yeah you know on thursday night rolled in yep yeah, rolled in late here yeah and stayed then, left friday morning and just kind of bumbled around here through between here and floyd probably an hour and a half away but yeah again in an area where you know you've got access to you know, stores, if you need it, you know, people, you know, enough people that if you needed something, you know, that certainly they could call and I'd pack my shit up and go help. So I do need, I do need to get, I do need to revisit one thing from a previous episode that we had talked about because someone had, someone had, had was talking to me and, and said that I said that Taco Bell was the most healthy of the fast foods. And I just yeah. want to clarify that was, that was not me, but there is actual studies that At say. At one point. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, 
uh, I've read a, read an article, and this was several years ago, that Taco Bell had hired like a nutritionalist. And I wonder if that was a new nutritionalist or they were just like, huh, interesting concept. <laughs> uh, but uh, at one point, their menu, like item by item, was the healthiest fast food you could get. I think that's when they were pushing the like Power Bowl and the Power Burrito and stuff like that, you know, pretty hard. Uh, but when I mean, you think about it, like, I would imagine that the ground beef probably brings them down. But like the steak and the grilled chicken and stuff, you know, and then you got a bunch of tomatoes, lettuce. Cheese is obviously good for you. Everyone knows right, that. We all know that. Yeah. yeah. Refried beans. Yeah. Yeah. Which which brings up a lot of questions, mostly for me, about what's going on. And everybody else's and fast everybody food. Everybody else's menu. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. what, I think that when it's going sideways menu? with all the other ones, yeah, if yeah. Taco Bell is the winner. So anyway, I never said that. I just want to make sure that's yeah. clear. That was not me. That was Rick. But look it who, up. Uh, it's on and, the Google. And there's some, some, there's actually there's a merit to this. Right. Yeah. It's statistically significant, we think. Like yeah. uh, Taco Bell six years ago. I mean, so tough luck. Can't get it now. <laughs> I'm, I bet that was after they released the like taco that used like chicken as a shell. I don't know, or is it, it's the that when they f- figured out there's almost no beef in the ground beef. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> oh, was no. it KFC that had the? Don't du- tell me this. I just want to enjoy my time. The, the double beef. down from KFC was the most mind boggling thing to me. That there was a marketing meeting, and then like I don't know the steps it takes to, for them to sign off on something, but nobody ever went. This is insanity. This is That's when they had idea. the chicken sandwich that used chicken for the bread. Yeah. So it was like two types of chicken. With just some, like, you know, your lettuce, tomato, I guess, and cheese and sauce in between. Yeah, that yeah. was That was it. And I had a friend that was, I don't know if it was a friend, I knew somebody who was, like, all about the double down and was all upset when they, like, didn't have it for a while and all this kind of stuff. Like, I thought you were going to, yeah, you were using a lot of past tense, and I was not even going to be surprised if he just, you know, wasn't no longer with us. <laughs> <laughs> the double wasn't down. long for this earth. Yeah, yeah, the double, double down, 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 double down. Du- yeah. I, yeah, I'm, so I've never had it. I don't eat chicken, so. Yeah. I don't know, I know anything about KFC. It's like chicken se- inception. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. So we can go back to the traveling thing. Yeah, yeah. I, but I did need to clear that up. That was a good aside, though. I appreciate it. That, yeah, one. that was uh, um, nice. one thing I want to kind of go back to a, a previous form of media. Uh, a lot of people getting started, they want to know, like, you know, how do I know where to go? And we've got a pretty good video on how to find places to go overlanding. Um, mm-hmm. It can seem really daunting, but like almost anywhere you're at, and I mean, yeah, like maybe like. I'm trying to think, like, you know, if you're like Metro Orlando, it, you, you may have a little more like time commitment to like drive out and find a spot, but you know. But I mean, how far from Metro Orlando? Orlando, is that what you yeah, said? Yeah, like oh, maybe. I'm in, sorry, I thought you said Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, uh, yeah, all, uh, Atlanta, almost went like, with Atlanta. And then I was like, oh, uh, boom, you brought, pop out to like was, Clayton Blue Ridge. That's that what area. I was just thinking. I'm like, your North Georgia is yeah, yeah. close. I mean, so that's when I was like, okay, another city, another city, another city. <laughs> Let's go south, further south. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Texas is tough for public land, uh, but you know, let's just say the majority of people probably can find something within ninety minutes. That's pretty awesome. You know? Yeah, 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 absolutely. That's a that's a a and, decent a decent like overnight trip, yeah. shakedown trip, stuff like that. And I, that's really the kicker, you know. Like then you figure out, oh geez, my cooler doesn't work, or yeah, you know, isn't going to keep my shit cold for more than one night without an ice stop or whatever. I mean, that, all that kind of stuff. I think you have to you have to figure out. Uh, if you haven't done a lot of it, you yeah. know, and and there's there's some things that you just, you know, I mean, and there's some you also figure out what you don't need. Yeah, you know what I mean, there's a lot of stuff out there that you just don't need to go do stuff, and you know, you can figure that out pretty quickly too. Yeah, I you feel know? like for us, we've kind of got for for like event camping or a week or even longer trip, we've we've got it down to like close a fridge and then two, maybe three front runner boxes, depending on kind of the weather and how remote I plan on getting. But I know when starting out, like it was really easy for me to just fill Take the, everything. Fill the truck up. Everything. Like, oh there's room. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Keep going. Yeah. Um I remember we one of the first trips that I did was with my buddy Dave and we were doing Trans American Trail across Tennessee. And actually it was like worst case scenario, like packed up his Jeep and uh like he like literally like 10 miles down the road realized he was having an issue. So we had to turn around and go back and then throw everything in my vehicle. And Holy cow, you want to talk about like realizing how much crap you have when you have to transfer it from one vehicle to another, like <laughs> in the parking lot. It's like, Oh my, and then you know, 90% of that stuff, we never touched it. Right. So no, that's the, you need, yeah. Something to make food hot, something to keep food cold. You need a first aid kit. You need fire extinguisher. Fire I mean, extinguisher you yeah. need a lot of the ju- the stuff you need you should have in your vehicle every day. Yeah. Right? Like your regular like 
the commute stuff, mm-hmm. which my commute list is probably higher than most, and my commute's probably shorter than most. Yeah, mm-hmm. as far as that goes. But um, you know, you know, daily driving stuff, and then like I said, way to way to way some shelter and some yeah. food, and, and I was gonna say, and then like a way to sleep comfortably. You know, and way to sleep comfortably will change. Xpad, get your get your get an Xpad, yeah, or a good you know a good heavy thermal rest if you're. Uh, yeah. But that's really all you need, need. And then, like you talked about, like inside that daily driver stuff, even like, you know, some recovery things. You, I mean, I keep a shovel and an axe and stuff like in my truck all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah. But that, again, that for me would be pretty normal travel stuff. I mean, yeah. I keep some tools in my truck. Yeah. Just because I keep a few tools in my mm-hmm. truck and I keep... Air compressor, plug kit, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. That would that would all be pretty daily, I want to say daily driver stuff, but... Boo-boo kit, it's not bad. Yeah, yeah, I mean first aid, oh, whatever yeah, your yeah. whatever your like, first aid. So I guess we're saying like is. what you need, you know, is only this much, but like what you should already have in your vehicle is probably this much of it, at least for us. Right, right. The add on, the add on shouldn't be that much. Yeah, the add on should be a pretty minimal amount, honestly. And the nice thing is, like you said, if 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 you've got you know interest stuff that you're interested in, whether that's fishing or biking or hiking or, or hunting or whatever it is, you know, it's like it's it's a great way to kind of test that kind of stuff. Go yeah. to a place you can get a little fishing in. Go to a place you can get a little biking, a little hiking in, yeah. something like that, and uh, and still do some kind of some kind of bumming around yeah. all at the same time, or go to interesting places like Jeremy and Jen were at the Floyd. Uh, what is that place in the Floyd? Floyd Country Store, right, or something? Yeah, Floyd Country Store, which has like really good bluegrass, like pretty regularly on the weekends. Yeah, I it's like yeah, because they were there mm-hmm. like on a Saturday or Sunday. Yeah, or, yeah. yeah. I think. I forget what that is, but there's a lot of neat places like that that you can roll yeah. up and grab something, Which, to grab a snack, and and it's a store, like sort yeah. of. Uh, that actually brings to the point too that I think you know some folks may think that getting into overlanding that you know they're not overlanding, they're not putting down like big miles, you know, uh, you know I, every day in day out. So I think that's kind of a uh, up to interpretation. Well, I mean that, that all goes back to the semantics of it, what what you're calling it versus what. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. What your which our last episode of landing versus off roading? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. You can hear name our it. thoughts on these topics. All right, right. Name it, name it, whatever you want. I don't care. But uh, I, I, I do think that I do think that people try to overcomplicate things, and most of the time, it's turning the key and driving away. Because worst case scenario, you, know, you can sleep in the front seat of your car. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll try not to do that anymore because it hurts my back. Yeah, but, it's you know, cool. I mean, yeah, I've had some flashbacks like right. when i realized that wasn't a good idea anymore yeah yeah stuck in snowstorms sleeping in the truck yeah. yeah oh i did it in an event once in an s10 that was a pretty defined uh, line for all, me. all mine have been unintentional yeah, yeah. I mean, i'm not well no nah, i've probably intentionally uh, slept in it once or twice yeah. but most of mine have it was been... just really terrible weather and Very... i went to bed thinking that was a better idea than dealing with the weather outside and then i woke up realizing no no i think i'd rather just been outside <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah, no, I've not been. Most of the situations I've been in have been stranded in, in a town or in something. Yeah, like I was snowed in at Sault Ste. Marie, Canada, one time for a night or two. That was in the Walmart parking lot. There wasn't really good camping there, so yeah, yeah. I slept. I slept. I think I slept on top of the truck because it had a cap on it. One, I slept in it one night and on top of it the next, and then they got it plowed out enough that the road was open again. Nice, and I could move again. Oh, and, uh, but I- that's you know. Don't go that far north in January. It's, it's the the moral of that story, I guess. Unless you're unless you're okay with unless you're okay with Walmart. One thing that comes to mind for me is like I, and, and again, something I'm guilty of is like I think it's a better plan to to pick something that's not too terribly far away. That's a sort of a collection of destinations or an area you want to explore and go and go bum around and explore it instead of like trying to find on you know a picture of something absolutely beautiful and blasting a way that you you have to go specifically there and then it kind of takes away a lot of the you know because then yeah. it's this kind of pass fail of you made it or you didn't rather than i hey i'm gonna spend some time finding what i like there yeah yeah or even I don't know. my wife is like totally planned trips off of a a single picture on pinterest i mean like we're gonna go find this i'm like okay it Happened to be in Montana. Yeah, so there's some pretty stuff. So, so, so there was some effort in figuring out uh, the yeah, logistics yeah. of it. But she was like, "We we need to go. We need to go here. I need to see this. That's pretty epic. I need to see this in person." Yeah, yeah. Okay. and it was like, "All right, okay." So you know, yeah. Two weeks of trip later, or if you've got you two know. weeks, then, then well, I mean, that's right. yeah. I mean, that's I mean, she's done that a number of times where she's just like, "Hey, I, we need to go see this," and mm. and it you know, it's an organ. 
yeah, yeah. <laughs> or whatever. I mean, we, we've, you know, we've been on some trips too. I think where you know, even if you do have kind of a destination in mind, finding those little offshoots. I think when we were down in like Teleco area yeah. uh, with MSO that time and stopped at the the big swimming hole that's pretty popular oh, right yeah. there along Broad River. You know, yeah, so yeah. like kill kill thirty forty minutes there. You know, and there isn't there an app or there's a website that has a list of all those. Of like all the swimming holes in like this area. Oh, wow. So yeah, the um, a swimming hole app now. No, there was a well, website that at least for Western North Carolina that had like an in depth database. Yeah. yeah. Oh, they had it was it had Virginia in it too. Oh, That's really? what I'm trying yeah. to. Th- it, it had it had Southwest Virginia in it too. Uh, if I remember, because I remember like, oh wait, I've been to that. You know, yeah, yeah. It, where it's like you know waterfall deep hole. Yeah. Uh, good place to swim. Yeah. Uh, you know, like on that, we, we had like, you know, a destination in mind. I don't remember where we ended up camping that night, but like, yeah. you know, but it's, oh, this is cool. It's about time for lunch. Let's, yeah, yeah, let's, let's get over. off here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I like having that kind of flexibility for a trip as well. I mean, we, you know, we'll you know, take a detour, do a short hike like yeah, we were yeah. talking about earlier. Um, so. Yeah, yeah, very little, very little planning just to, yeah. we're going to end up here at some point and. Yeah, yeah. And then we can kind of bum around from there. No, for sure. There's a lot of, a lot of fun in that. Yeah. And I think, you know, for gear, when you, when people are like thinking about their whole idea of overlanding is, you know, for us, it's the convenience of a lot of the gear. So, you know, our shelter is easy to put up and take down, you know, our storage is kind of geared towards efficiency for cooking. That way you do have more time. For well, and I think, yeah, I think the shakedown trips are where you learn to do a lot of that too. The yeah. little short trips or you kind of learn to, oh, geez, this is a giant pain to get packed up and moving or, yeah. or it takes us an hour to get packed up and right. going and we need to factor that into our day as opposed to pretend like we're going to be able to do it in 30 minutes mm-hmm. you know or, or from the time we wake up till the time we can leave is three hours and, and just being okay with that yeah, yeah. as opposed to you know being frustrated because you've been out of there right thank you jason for so you've taught me a lot of that a lot of patience <laughs> on me uh, i get up in the morning let's go <laughs> i'm the only one <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's sit down, have some coffee. Let's, yeah, yeah. Maybe I should cook something else. Let's, you know. <laughs> and, and traveling with a group, yeah. Um, no, that's a good point. Um, I, I'm always impressed when, like, uh, you take somebody new out, and if they do get up before you, they, like, get up and, like, start getting stuff done. Yeah. Know, they don't, like, wait. Uh, that, that always inspires me, because I've done some trips with people that were, like, you know, pretty new to it. And then, you know, when you wake up, you're like, oh, new guy got the fire going this morning, or new guy's got bacon on. It's like, he's a keeper. He, right. He, he just went further up the priority list. Right. <laughs> Next yeah. time we'll call him. I'm calling him during the apocalypse. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I, I remember being on a tarp camping trip, uh, like off-trail hiking with a guy. That a tarp had... camping trip. So you actually you actually set out to execute said tarp trip. Yeah, yeah. Camping we, trip. we literally had a, a lake up in the mountains as a goal. And public land between us and it, and some forest roads, but most of it off off trail, off anything hiking. And uh, this dude had only ever been camping in a campground before, and he went with me and my buddy Steve. It's my friend Chuck, but at that point, he had only ever been camping in campground. And <laughs> do you have a good time? Uh, yeah. So it it, it uh, we we kept slept just off the ridge above the lake that night. It was probably January, February. Mm-hmm. It's it it sleeted that night. And uh, I remember laying there under my tarp because we all had like one man tarps and just kind of circled them up okay. and hearing like some something moving around and uh, like peeked out and he was like getting the fire started and getting some water going for coffee and was like, it's because nice. he's trying not to die. <laughs> In hindsight, he was like, yeah, I was just tired of being cold. <laughs> right, yeah, I know. And I was like, yeah, I hadn't reached the tipping point of like, you know. Uh, it's Enough not cold to motivate you to get out of your sleep. Yeah, bag. yeah. It's not. It's not warmer outside of my. I'm not in a cold bag. I'm right. in a sleeping bag. Uh, but yeah, you know, like people that are willing to kind of, you know, yeah, no. jump in where they can, so they're that, just expecting you to do it all. So that that made me think of something too. Is just like if you go with the group, not everybody needs every piece of equipment. Not everybody needs a chainsaw. Oh, yeah. You know, you may, maybe need to winch every two vehicles. You know, I mean, even like stuff, stuff like camp stoves, you know, like if uh, a lot of times now, if I'm going with two vehicles, you know, and it's three mm. or four guys, like we're, you know, we're going to be yeah, using the same no stuff. Point, right. behind. You bring a jet boil, I'll bring a dual burner. Right. All our bases are covered, you right. know, and mm-hmm. some planning. We do a lot of fajitas, a lot of tacos where people can bring separate ingredients and then. And you can probably get by with one fridge with two vehicles, depending on oh, how many yeah. people it is. Ooh. And don't and don't take that advice. Yeah, yeah, it depends on the fridge. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah, everybody has their own fridge. I'm just saying. And how much oh, okay. stuff? How much stuff is already in the fridge? Matt got right, burned. Right, right. 
Um, yeah, on that note, you know, I was going to say, too, we we're talking about uh, kind of in our budget overlanding episode and then what you need here. Um, when I was without a fridge for a while, when I was actually didn't have anything on the back of the truck in the Tacoma, um, you know, I was using the cooler more. And I've kind of forgotten, like, not only with the ice, but then, you know, using like dry ice and stuff like that. I actually had the, uh, the opposite issue. I froze some stuff solid on yeah, the trip. Yeah. Like, dry ice will do that for sure. Yeah. Like, Especially if you don't really insulate it well. Yeah. yeah it was like a th- four day trip. Yeah. Wasn't able to take the fridge because there was nothing on the back of the truck. So it was just like, to strap the cooler in here. Oh, we'll put right. some dry ice in the bottom. And then on like day three, like. You froze from the bottom up. Like cans or whatever were, you know. Solid as a rock. Practically ice aged. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah, dry ice will get you in trouble. I mean, that dry ice works really well, mm-hmm. but it does its job. Sure, it has to be like to, yeah, to the it take, the problem is you have, you have to take up room because, like I said, you have to insulate it from everything that's in yeah, there, yeah. and it just sucks up sucks really up a well. Chunk of room, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, my couple layers of cardboard did not work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, yeah. Normally, when we've done it, we've done a bunch of a uh, bunch of newspaper, just taken the newspaper and just stacked it, probably an inch thick or better. yeah, mm. and that normally will. Or in my experience, we've had luck with... It worked for... Yeah, mine worked for a few days until it... I don't know. Maybe stuff got compressed or whatever, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, like, you know, we talk about like, oh, a, a cooler's easy, but not always easier. You know? Yeah. And and fridges, I mean, like uh, we had a guy come in the shop here back in the summer that had one of the ice co's. And uh, first time I'd really got a chance to check one out. And quality-wise, was impressed. He said he it was his second one. He had one in a different rig that he had sold. Uh, so for, I feel like fridges are a little more approachable than they used to be. Not to say you yeah. have to have a fridge to go over landing. No, no, God, no. But they're handy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, you just need summer sausage and some triscuits or something. Yeah. You know? I mean, like, honestly, you know what yeah. I mean? So, so one thing I thought of is like vehicles. Like a lot of people may think that they need this or that vehicle or this, that l- this level of vehicle to get started. And what are you guys thoughts on that? Uh, you know, I don't know. Honda Civic with a heavy rate foot. and Yeah, yeah. In little sense, will get you a lot of places. Yeah, you can overland at anything once. Uh, I've I've found enough parts Especially in the back if country you have to... a, a ramp to get you up there. Uh, no, I, I think you know with reasonable expectations. You know, like forest roads, you can run. Every... Oh yeah, oh, in any yeah. SUV. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know if I go that far. Yeah, uh, most, but most. Yeah. Of, yeah, I mean... Oh, not a, all. Not all SUVs are actually four wheel drive. A lot of them are SUV lookalikes that are just, just people mini vans with square the... noses. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't know, man. I'm thinking. I'm thinking all wheel drive Sienna. Oh, I know. But that, that's. A, I actually saw a lifter one the other day. And Wait, they make all wheel drive. Did you really? Yeah. And it was live in a person. Yeah, lifted? yeah. Dude, I <laughs> so want one of these. Wait, do they make all wheel drive Sienna? Yeah, they make all wheel yeah. drive. Let's go back. They make all wheel drive hybrid Siennas. Oh they get God. like thirty five mile a gallon. Holy crap! Right, That's I kind of more than my my really my Forester, which is really lightweight. Right. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Like yeah. 32 Holy point crap. somethings, you know. He yeah, had, he had some black, uh, some blacked out wheels black on steelies it. on it. Yeah, <clears throat> thirty two yeah. inches. Uh, thirty two inches. Yeah. So. Yeah, dude. Dude, I'm, yeah. I'm so in for that. At the red that's light. as much clearance as mm. like a Subaru uh, right there. Yeah, yeah. And I was going to say, you know, I think one thing is like um, tires matter. So, you know, even if you do have maybe not an all-wheel drive, I would still want some decent tires. Yeah, yeah. Um, an air compressor. So, you know, if you want to air down a little bit or whatever. And then just reasonable expectations. Like, you know, I've come around a qu- curve on some forest roads and been like, oh, break, break, break. You know, like. Mostly they're they're well maintained, but occasionally like a, yeah, a bad ditch, watch ass or something. Yeah, yeah, it just gives up. So yeah. don't don't be dumb, and you can get you can still have a lot of adventures and practically anything. Yeah, and, and practice with... backing up at home. We're heading in uh, about a month and a Dude, half. Don't threaten me with a good time. I'll to Missouri. Talk about a shakedown trip. Right, that would be it. We'd shake down. I don't there. think we can take the camper. No, that's that's that would be the downfall for me is yeah. that it Towing needs. Capacity. Yeah, I would need to be able to tow with but it. But no, man, we we put a rooftop tent on it. One of us sleeps in the tent. One of us sleeps in the bottom. We got our own little, yeah. Right, right. Yeah, that's true. That's true. We, uh, yeah. Which, speaking of events, we got the Moore event in uh, Missouri coming up the end of April. Uh, however, I know this will be just a little delayed. The Save South Southeast Adventure Vehicle Expo uh, just happened. We had some uh, friends of the brand that were down there. Freedom Van Gogh's crew. Uh, a couple. Of uh, guys from Virginia, Tom and Steve. Uh, if you went to that event, let us know what you think. Uh, that one's kind of on our radar for next year as a maybe. Yeah. So uh, it's in Florida, uh, Florida International, like Motor or something, something. Um, so yeah, drop a comment if you went to the Save Expo or the Save event. I don't even know what the technical name is, but yeah. Yeah. 
Um, I customer comments. I wanted to read a really good uh, customer comment uh, from last week, which was was this about the podcast? Yeah. Oh, so viewer. Okay, okay. Viewer so this comment. is actually a viewer comment. I just want to make sure. I, I'm just trying viewer to figure comments. out. Viewer comments. I was just trying to figure viewer out comments, whether it was customer it, whether it was yeah, from good. my. Uh, Maybe they are also a customer, but I don't. Whether know. it was one of the ones from my private account, you know, my what do you call those things? Uh, accounts for you. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. This one from Zachary Elias. He said, "If me. you are re- recovering slash repairing a vehicle while overlanding, you've messed up." If you aren't recovering or repairing a vehicle while off-roading, you are not trying hard enough. <laughs> yeah, you could have saved us a lot of time if we, you just sent that in before we recorded the podcast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You I summed really it up perfectly. <laughs> we really Thank wish you, you could sir. speed that up. Yeah. yeah. And that wasn't from one of my rogue accounts. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So I probably fall more into the overlanding side. I don't think I want to be doing trail repairs. Yeah. Like, like, I mean, there's always for me the balance. Like there's, you know, like type one fun where like, yeah, the trip, it was cool, but not super memorable. Type two fun. That's where I like to stay where like, there's a few minutes when you're like, Oh God, this sucks. And then later you're like, that was awesome. Right. And then type three fun. I've had some of those where it's like, <laughs> well, we didn't die. So it could have been worse. So we're kind of happy about <laughs> it, but we also have to deal with the repercussions for, you know, <laughs> the next two months. Yeah. 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 Of our of our entertainment. If, if you've ever had to go back and get your truck seven hours away, that kind of like yeah, you know, that's when you vein, get get into the vein of type three fun. And like, what are you doing Wednesday? Going back to get all my crap. Like, <laughs> and when they ask how was it, you're like, well, I made memories. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I won't forget the trip back to yeah. get the truck. When you lost a radiator, a tree almost fell in the tent, and you definitely were flirting with hypothermia, that's like type three fun. <laughs> type three fun. Yeah. And that was all in about a four hour span for me. So, <laughs> so we're, well, the goal is to keep it in the type two fun. Yeah. Yeah. Really. Type two. You can run up to the line and look at type three, <laughs> but just, just peer over yeah, the yeah. edge. Don't, uh, no. don't actually jump off that hill. Yeah. I know we're, we're on, we're on time, but oh, I yeah. think the, I think that may be a story for another day. Okay. Well, you've wasted another perfectly good hour listening to the Overland Bonfire. Don't drive like your grandmother, but do drive like uh, like these fine gentlemen. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you next time. I don't even know what it means. It's, a, it's an attempt. It's some car talk humor. He's, oh, he's yeah. interjecting. He's talk? interjecting some car talk. No, I don't, I don't absorb any overlanding uh, media except That's for... Some oh, good. no. There's no, no it's not overlanding. Really it's old car time. talk. It's radio from like, what was it, like the 90s and 2000s, early 2000s. Yeah, oh. car talk. They both passed away a long time ago. Oh, yeah, no. It was, P- it was a PBS show that was on every Saturday. Oh yeah, car talk where okay, it's click and clack and the yeah, yeah. Yeah. our attorneys. They're in forget the what. original Cars movie, like the, the couple. <laughs> yeah, they're like they, the, the the Rusties, the Rusties. Yeah, yeah the, the Rusties, Rusties guys. guys, and they actually like they're like don't drive like my brother. It's like their bit. Don't the, drive like the, my brother. Their intro for, uh, and then it's you know, and then they have all these funny things about their attorney and their watch as I get educated. Guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Don't my, uh, our attorneys are Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Good yeah, do see them. Yeah, he has. A, they have a whole list of like. <laughs> uh, there's a bunch of people they'd like to thank, like to thank our, you know, whatever yeah, yeah. they do. Anyway, bye.